Okay, so today we have Q&A, speed building. Let me give you some words that come out. You have training, primarily. You have employment, Kmart, Walmart, 7-Eleven, long-term. You have inaccurate memory, services, exhibit two, educare, developmentally, Wyoming, Riverton. You have educare, um, employer, Monica Clinton, Sarah Moore, Las Cruces, headquarters, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Carlsbad, Mr. Brown, Kathy Danos, Monica Clinton, Missouri, Honcho, Arlette Bates, education, degree. And so uh, real quickly, I know there's a brief for Albuquerque. I believe it's, no. Let me see, Albuquerque. Any questions, Cynthia? Uh, can you hear me now? Let me see, Albuquerque is Quirk, sorry, Q-E-R-K, one stroke. Okay, Albuquerque, and then you have employment point. You have Long-term is LERM. So think of the L for the long and then ERM for the term. And then you have um, EDUCARE is just E-D-U care. Okay, all together. Uh, the E's capitalized. Developmentally, develop is DWAP. Mentally. Dwap meant. Ali. Huh. I don't know, it's not putting it together. And so you have um, Wyoming is W I twice with an asterisk. Long I. And then you have um, I don't recall Y O R L asterisk. Without the asterisk, okay? And this is gonna be at one eighty. One eighty. No, is it slower? Mm -mm. Okay, one eighty, you all, for five minutes. Okay, it starts in the middle. So the training you would have had here would have been primarily job related. Would that be correct? Yes. On your resume, does this list all of your employment experience or just some of it? Just some. What other employment experience have you had? Well, various short jobs, such as working at places like Kmart, Walmart. I see I have my work study on here. So that's, I believe I worked at 7-Eleven once. Kind of the odd type of jobs you have when you're in high school or college. Yes. Would you say that it's fair to say more of your long-term jobs are listed on here? Would that be correct? Yes. As you review the first of these two resumes, the more recent of the two, did you notice anything on it that you now recognize as inaccurate or does it all appear to be accurate and correct? As far as memory serves, I would have to say it's accurate. As far, I think what I will do just for the sake of keeping a cleaner record is I'm going to take the second resume off and make it exhibit two. That would be the one that you had used at the time. Want me to? Yes, if you would, please. You first applied at EduCare, is that correct? Yes. Okay, good enough, thank you. 
prior to working at Educare, have you had any experience in working with developmentally disabled adults? I have. What experience was that? I believe while in high school, I worked for a company in Riverton, an agency in Riverton, Wyoming. Do you recall the name of that agency? I don't recall the name of it. What did you do in your work for that agency? Direct service care, direct care provider. Did you work in a group home setting? I did. Did you have any training in connection with that position? Just ongoing in services that the agency provided. How long did you have that job? I don't recall. What are your career plans at the present? To remain with Educare, to attain the highest level that I can, given my abilities and education, eventually get back into school and get my degree. I'm going to ask you kind of what might be a convoluted question. What is the appeal of working with Educare? Is it you enjoy the work or you value this employer? I'm asking that because it seems like a step off the career track you were in in college. Since I started this job or working in this field in high school, it's kind of like one of those businesses that anywhere you move, it's there. So there's employment. So at first, I guess it was, you know. Well, there's a lot of opportunities. Exactly. As I've worked in it, of course, it's a rewarding job. As I attain higher levels, you get higher pay and it's hard to step away from that. How many promotions have you had in the time you've been at Educare? I believe three. With each of these promotions, I'd assume that you have earned more wages? Yes. In any of these positions, have you ever been on exempt status in terms of overtime? Yes. Is that in your present position? Yes. Prior to that time, you were on non-exempt status? That's right. Isn't that correct? Okay. What is your present position? Program coordinator. Is that here in Las Cruces, the Las Cruces office? Effective July 6th, it will be yes. When was that position opening posted or was it posted? I don't recall the exact date. How did you learn the position was open? I received a fax of a job posting as is customary at Educare. Were there other applicants for the position? Yes. With whom did you interview? With Monica Clinton and Sarah Moore. What is Sarah Moore's position? I believe her current position is acting program manager. For what area? the Las Cruces area. What is the relationship between the Las Cruces, between the different offices in New Mexico? Let's back up and let me ask you a question. Where is Educare present in New Mexico? Albuquerque, Farmington, Las Cruces, and Carlsbad. Does each of those towns have an Educare office? Yes. What is the relationship between those different towns? To my understanding, Albuquerque is generally the headquarters for New Mexico. Farmington and Las Cruces would be below that, but equal, and the Carlsbad area is generally below Las Cruces, or Las Cruces supervises Carlsbad as well. So Carlsbad would be a smaller? Yes. What is your chain of command or will be in your new position? Who will be your direct super supervisor? Well, as it currently stands, I believe Sarah Moore will be my direct supervisor. Then who will be over Miss Moore? Monica Clinton. Then to whom does Monica Clinton answer? Kathy Danos. And Kathy Danos is the regional manager, is that correct? I believe her title is Area Director of Operations. Who then is next in the chain of command over Kathy Dungan? Currently, I believe it's Mike Brown. Are Mr. Brown and Ms. Danos in Albuquerque? Kathy Danos is in Albuquerque, yes. Mr. Brown is in Missouri, I believe. So he offices out of Missouri? I believe so, yes. Is he still Executive Director of Educare in New Mexico? I may have the title wrong. I've never heard that. Okay, and so uh, any questions you all, Chantal or Cynthia? No. No, Cynthia? And so real quickly, you all, I wrote um, good enough is G-U-F. Good enough, G-U-F. Education, E-G-S. High school is HOOL, H-A-O-L for high school. And then, um, let me see, there was some others that I wanted to give you just real quickly. Um, disable is Dable, D long A B L, Dable. Okay, I guess I'll see them in a little bit. Let me see. Yeah, Dable is Disable, okay? D long A B L. And this is going to be at 190, you all. Oh, Missouri would be, what's the abbreviation if you're writing it? M short I? No, that's Michigan. M D. 
Massachusetts, MS or Mississippi, Mississippi. Missouri, M-I-Z? M-O. Oh, M-O, yeah. Thank you. M-O is Missouri twice. You all think of the abbreviation, okay? That usually helps. If you think of the abbreviation of the state when you're writing it in English, and this is going to be at 190. So the training you would have had here would have been primarily job related. Would that be correct? Yes. On your resume, does this list all of your employment experience or just some of it? Just some. What other employment experience have you had? Well, various short jobs, such as working at places like Kmart, Walmart. I see I have my work study on here, so that's, I believe I worked at 7-Eleven once. Kind of the odd type of jobs you have when you're in high school or college. Yes. Would you say that it's fair to say more of your long-term jobs are listed on here? Would that be correct? Yes. As you review the first of these two resumes, the more recent of the two, did you notice anything on it that you now recognize as inaccurate? Or does it all appear to be accurate and correct? As far as memory serves, I would have to say it's accurate. I think what I will do just for the sake of keeping a cleaner record is I'm going to take the second resume off and make it exhibit two. That would be the one that you had used at the time. Want me to? Yes, if you would, please. You first applied at Educare, is that correct? Yes. Okay, good enough. Thank you. Prior to working at Educare, have you had any experience in working with developmentally disabled adults? I have. What experience was that? I believe while in high school, I worked for a company in Riverton an agency in Riverton, Wyoming. And do you recall the name of that agency? I don't recall the name of it. What did you do in your work for that agency? Direct service care, direct care provider. Did you work in a group home setting? I did. Did you have any training in connection with that position? Just ongoing in-services that the agency provided. How long did you have that job? I don't recall. What are your career plans at the present? To remain with Educare, to attain the highest level that I can, given my abilities and education, eventually get back into school and get my degree. I'm going to ask you kind of what might be a convoluted question. What is the appeal of working with Educare? Is it you enjoy to work or you value this employer? I'm asking that because it seems like a step off the career track you were on in college. Since I started this job or working in this field in high school, it's kind of like one of those businesses that anywhere you move, it's there. So there's employment. So at first, I guess it was, you know. Well, there's a lot of opportunity. Exactly. As I've worked in it, of course, it's a rewarding job. As I attain higher levels, you get higher pay, and it's hard to step away from that. How many promotions have you had in the times you've been at Educare? I believe three. With each of these promotions, I'd assume that you have earned more wages? Yes. In any of these positions, have you ever been on exempt status in terms of overtime? Yes. Is that in the present position? Yes. Prior to that time, you were on non-exempt status. That's right. Isn't that correct? Okay, what is your present position? Program coordinator. Is that here in the Las Cruces office? Effective July 6th, it will be yes. When was that position opening posted or was it posted? I don't recall the exact date. How often did you learn the position was open? I received a fax of a job posting, as is customary at Educare. Were there other applicants for the position? Yes. With whom did you interview? With Monica Clinton and Sarah Moore. What is Sarah Moore's position? I believe her current position is acting program manager. For what area? The Las Cruces area. What is the relationship between the Las Cruces, between the different offices in New Mexico? Let's back up and let me just ask you a question. Where is Educare present in New Mexico? Albuquerque, Farmington, Las Cruces, and Carlsbad. Does each of those towns have an Educare office? Yes. What is the relationship between those different towns? To my understanding, Albuquerque is generally the headquarters for New Mexico. Farmington and Las Cruces would be below that, but equal, and the Carlsbad area is generally below Las Cruces, or Las Cruces supervises Carlsbad as well. So Carlsbad would be a smaller? Yes. What is your chain of command or will be in your new position? Who will be your direct supervisor? Well, as it currently stands, I believe Sarah Moore will be my direct supervisor. Then who will be over Miss Moore? Monica Clinton. Then to whom does Monica Clinton answer? Kathy Danos. And Kathy Danos is the regional manager, is that correct? I believe her title is Area Director of Operations. Who then is next in the chain of command over Kathy Dungan? Currently, I believe it's Mike Brown. Are Mr. Brown and Ms. 
Danos in Albuquerque? Kathy Danos is in Albuquerque, yes. Mr. Brown is in Missouri, I believe. So he offices out of Missouri? I believe so, yes. Is he still executive director of Educare in New Mexico? I may have the title wrong. I've never heard that title. What title do you know for sure? I believe currently he may be vice president of operations as we currently stand. So who is the head honcho, if you will, in New Mexico? That currently resides that currently resides in New Mexico, I would have to say Kathy Danos. But Mr. Brown still has oversight here? Yes. When policies are given out to Educare employees based on your experience for both being here and in Carlsbad, are they the same policies? And so real quickly, um, any questions, Cynthia or Chantel? Um, no. no? I, can't, I can't think of anything right now. Okay. And so you have supervisor is S long U F R P Z S long U V R P Z for supervisor. And then convoluted is con vo V O loot L long U T come back D. And then there's um, what else? Let me see. Nothing until. Not right now. And I don't know if you saw, but Albuquerque is quirk. Oh, okay. Okay, one stroke quirk for Albuquerque. This is going to be at 200. So the training you would have had would have been primarily job related. Would that be accurate? Yes. On your resume, does this list all of your employment experience or just some of it? Just some. What other employment experience have you had? Well, various short jobs such as working at places like Walmart, Kmart. I see I have my work study on here. So that's, I believe I worked at 7-Eleven once. Kind of the odd type of jobs you have when you're in high school or college. Yes. Would you say that it's fair to say more of your long term jobs are listed on here? Would that be correct? Yes. As you review the first of these two resumes, the more recent of the two, did you notice anything on it that you now recognize as inaccurate or does it all appear to be accurate and correct? As far as memory serves, I would have to say it's accurate. I think what I will do just for the sake of keeping a cleaner record is I'm going to take the second resume off and make it exhibit two. That would be the one that you had used at the time. Want me to? Yes, if you would, please. You first applied at Educare. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, good enough. Thank you. Prior to working at Educare, have you had any experience in working with developmentally disabled adults? I have. What experience was that? I believe while in high school, I worked for a company in Riverton, an agency in Riverton, Wyoming. Do you recall the name of that agency? I don't recall the name of it. What did you do in your work for that agency? Direct service care, direct care provider. Did you work in a group home setting? I did. Did you have any training in connection with that position? Just ongoing in services that the agency provided. How long did you have that job? I don't recall. What are your career plans at the present? To remain with Educare, to attain the highest level that I can given my abilities and education, eventually get back into school and get my degree. I'm going to ask you kind of what might be a convoluted question. What is the appeal of working with Educare? Is it you enjoy the work or you value this employer? I'm asking that question because it seems like a step off the career track you were on in college. Since I started this job or working in this field in high school, it's kind of like one of those businesses that anywhere you move, it's there. So there's employment. So at first, I guess it was, you know, there's lots of opportunity. Exactly. As I've worked in it, of course, it's a rewarding job. As I attain higher levels, you get higher pay, and it's hard to step away from that. How many promotions have you had in the time you've been at Educare? I believe three. With each of these promotions, I'd assume that you have earned more wages? Yes. In any of those positions, have you ever been on exempt status in terms of overtime? Yes. Is that in your present position? Yes. Prior to that time, you were on non-exempt status? That's right. Isn't that correct? Okay, what is your present position? Program coordinator. Is that here in the Las Cruces office? Effective July 6th, it will be yes. When was that position opening posted or was it posted? I don't recall the exact date. How did you learn the position was open? I received a fax of a job posting as is customary at Educare. Were there other applicants for the position? Yes. With whom did you interview? Monica Clinton and Sarah Moore. 
What is Sarah Moore's position? I believe her current position is acting program manager. For what area? The Las Cruces area. What is the relationship between the Las Cruces, between the different offices in New Mexico? Let's back up and let me ask you a question. Where is Educare present in New Mexico? Albuquerque, Farmington, Las Cruces, and Carlsbad. Does each of those towns have an Educare office? Yes. What is the relationship between those different towns? To my understanding, Albuquerque is generally the headquarters for New Mexico. Farmington and Las Cruces would be below that, but equal, and the Carlsbad area is generally below Las Cruces, or Las Cruces supervises Carlsbad as well. So Carlsbad would be a smaller? Yes. What is your chain of command or will be in your new position? Who will be your direct supervisor? Well, as it currently stands, I believe Sarah Moore will be my direct supervisor. Then who will be over Miss Moore? Monica Clinton. Then to whom does Monica Clinton answer? Kathy Danos. And Kathy Danos is the regional manager, is that correct? I believe her title is Area Director of Operations. Who then is next in the chain of command over Kathy Dungan? Currently, I believe it's Mike Brown. Are Mr. Brown and Ms. Danos in Albuquerque? Kathy Danos is in Albuquerque, yes. Mr. Brown is in Missouri, I believe. So he offices out of Missouri? I believe so, yes. Is he still Executive Director of Educare in New Mexico? I may have the title wrong. I've never heard that title. What title do you have or know for him? I believe currently he may be Vice President of Operations as we currently stand. So who is the head honcho, if you will, in New Mexico? That currently resides in New Mexico. I would have to say Kathy Danos. So Mr. Brown still has oversight here? Yes. When policies are given out to Educare employees based on your experience, both being here and in Carlsbad, are they the same policies? Yes. Where do those policies originate, if you know? Either Austin or Albuquerque, I would have to say. Based on your knowledge of Educare's... And so let me give you some words, you all. You've got... Um, if you will, is full with an asterisk, full with an asterisk. Uh, Vice President is VPT, with the, uh, just like that, VPT. Thank you is T-H-A-U-N-G with an asterisk. T-H-A-U-N-G with an asterisk. And then I like this one. Fair to say is fair with the T-S. Fair is T is for two, S is for say, fair to say. It comes out, okay? Any questions, Chantel or Cynthia? Um, do you have one for Las Cruces? Uh, you know, I think it's just stroked out. So Las Cruces. And it doesn't come out, but you're just entered into your dictionary. Do you know how to do those entries, Shempa? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I would just phonetically stroke it out, Las Cruces, and then just enter it. Okay. No, no brief for it. Anything else, Cynthia? Do you have one for provider? Provide. Provide, I think you all write, I write it pride like that. P-R-O-I-D is my provide, so then come back E-R. How do you all write provide, Michelle? Just two strokes? Mm -hmm. So it's provide for your uh, STEN-Ed. I don't have, but I write pride like that. Freud for pride. Okay, anything else, Chantel? Remember, um, you can use whatever you like as long as it doesn't conflict. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I think the only other one that kind of throws me off eventually yeah, and so you could write event, surely, no event, yeah, however you write event and then surely, yeah, okay, no brief for that. Actually, I think I do write eventual is like that, V and then RBL. That's a good one. Yeah, I like my eventual, I think that's a vowel but I do eventual and then Lee. My, my Lee is different from yours. Yours is L-I, okay? And then this is gonna be 210. Two ten, you all. So the training you would have had here would have been primarily job related. Would that be correct? Yes. On your resume, does this list all of your employment experience or just some of it? Just some. What other employment experience have you had? Well, various short jobs, such as working at places like Walmart, Kmart. I see I have my work study on here, so that's, I believe I worked at 7-Eleven once. Kind of the odd type of jobs you have when you're in high school or college. Yes. Would you say that it's fair to say more of your long-term jobs are listed on here? Would that be correct? Yes. As you review the first of these two resumes, the more recent of the two, did you notice anything on it that you now recognize as inaccurate, or does it all appear to be accurate and correct? As far as memory serves, I would have to say it's accurate. 
I think what I will do just for the sake of keeping a cleaner record is I'm going to take the second resume off and make it exhibit two. That would be the one that you had used at the time. You want me to? Yes, if you would, please. You first applied at Educare, is that correct? Yes. Okay, good enough, thank you. Prior to working at Educare, have you had any experience in working with developmentally disabled adults? I have. What experience was that? I believe while in high school, I worked for a company in Riverton, an agency in Riverton, Wyoming. And do you recall the name of that agency? I don't recall the name of it. What did you do in your work for that agency? Direct service care, direct care provider. Did you work in a group home setting? I did. Did you have any training in connection with that position? Just ongoing in services that the agency provided. How long did you have that job? I don't recall. What are your career plans at the present? To remain with Educare, to attain the highest level that I can given my abilities and education, eventually get back into school and get my degree. I'm going to ask you kind of what might be a convoluted question. What is the appeal of working with Educare? Is it that you enjoy the work or you value this employer? I'm asking that because it seems like a step off the career track you were on in college. Since I started this job or working in this field in high school, it's kind of like one of those businesses that anywhere you move, it's there. So there's employment. So at first, I guess it was, you know, well, there's lots of opportunity. Exactly. As I've worked in it, of course, it's a rewarding job. As I attain higher levels, you get higher pay, and it's hard to step away from that. How many promotions have you had in the times you've been at Educare? I believe three. With each of these promotions, I'd assume that you have earned more wages. Yes. In any of these positions, have you ever been on exempt status in terms of overtime? Yes. Is that in your present position? Yes. Prior to that time, you were on non-exempt status? That's right. Isn't that correct? Okay, what is your present position? Program coordinator. And is that here in the Las Cruces office? Effective July 6th, it will be yes. When was that position opening posted or was it posted? I don't recall the exact date. How did you learn the position was open? I received a fax of a job posting as is customary at Educare. Were there other applicants for the position? Yes. With whom did you interview? With Monica Clinton and Sarah Moore. What is Sarah Moore's position? I believe her current position is acting program manager. For what area? The Las Cruces area. What is the relationship between the Las Cruces, between the different offices in New Mexico? Let's back up and let me ask you a question. Where is Educare present in New Mexico? Albuquerque, Farmington, Las Cruces, and Carlsbad. Does each of those towns have an Educare office? Yes. What is the relationship between those different towns? To my understanding, Albuquerque is generally the headquarters for New Mexico. Farmington and Las Cruces would be below that, but equal, and the Carlsbad area is generally below Las Cruces, or Las Cruces supervises Carlsbad as well. So Carlsbad would be a smaller? Yes. What is your chain of command, or will be in your new position? Who will be your direct supervisor? Well, as it currently stands, I believe Sarah Moore will be my direct supervisor. Then who will be over Miss Moore? Monica Clinton. Then to whom does Monica Clinton answer? Kathy Danos. And Kathy Danos is the regional manager, is that correct? I believe her title is Area Director of Operations. Who then is next in the chain of command over Kathy Dungan. Currently, I believe it's Mike Brown. Are Mr. Brown and Ms. Danos in Albuquerque? Kathy Danos is in Albuquerque, yes. Mr. Brown is in Missouri, I believe. So he offices out of Missouri? I believe so, yes. Is he still Executive Director of Educare New Mexico? I may have the title wrong. I've never heard that title. What title do you know for him? I believe currently he may be Vice President of Operations as we currently stand. So who is the head honcho, if you will, in New Mexico? that currently resides in New Mexico, I would have to say Kathy Danos. But Mr. Brown still has oversight here? Yes. When policies are given out to Educare employees based on your experience, both being here and in Carlsbad, are they the same policies? Yes. Where do these policies originate, if you know? Either Austin or Albuquerque, I would have to say. Based on your knowledge of Educare's structure, is it your understanding that all of New Mexico runs under the same policies and procedures? We do. Who is the human resources person for New Mexico? Her name is Arlette Bates. Where is she positioned or stationed? In the Albuquerque office. Did she have any role in any of your hiring? And so real quickly, you all, if you know is fun with an asterisk. Fun with an asterisk, okay? Um, you've got, what else? Have you ever, V-U-F-R, have you ever, V-U-F-R? Anywhere, I write anywhere like that, because where in the phrase is RP, so any is NI, and then I just write RP. Oops, NI, RP. Okay, I like that. And then um, if you would, F-U-L-D, -U -U if you would, 
Any questions, Chantelle or Cynthia? No, not right now. No? Okay. And do you all want to read back? Sure. Okay. You're 180, Chantel? Mm -hmm. Okay, this will be for 180 then, okay? Because I, I can't hear Cynthia. Is she, do you still show her on, Chantel? Yeah, I see her on okay. my, on my um, screen. Okay, so this is for read back at 180. So, the training you would have had here would have been primarily job related. Would that be correct? Yes. On your resume, does this list all of your employment experience or just some of it? Just some. What other employment experience have you had? Well, various short jobs, such as working at places like Kmart, Walmart. I see I have my work study on here, so that's, I believe I worked at 7-Eleven once. Kind of the odd type of jobs you have when you're in high school or college. Yes. Would you say that it's fair to say more of your long-term jobs are listed on here? Would that be correct? Yes. As you review the first of these two resumes, the more recent of the two, did you notice anything on it that you now recognize as inaccurate, or does it all appear to be accurate and correct? As far as memory serves, I would have to say it's accurate. I think what I will do, just for the sake of keeping a cleaner record, and whenever you're ready, Chantel. Uh, okay, so question. So training that you would have had here would um, would have been primarily job related. Would that be correct? Answer yes. Question on this list. On your resume, does this list? Oh, does this list, okay, on your resume, does this list, um, does this list, does it list all of your uh, employment experience or just some? Uh, answer, some. Just some? Just some. Uh, question. I think I dropped, I have what, and then I have my answer. Okay, what other employment experience have you had? Answer? Answer, I have Kmart, Walmart. Okay, well, various short jobs, such as working at places like Kmart. Walmart, I see I have my work study on here. I believe I worked at 7-Eleven once. Okay, on here, and then it just had a so that's, dash, dash, I believe I worked at 7-Eleven once. Good. And keep going. Uh, question. Uh, kind of the odd jobs you have been. Okay, kind of the odd type of jobs you have when. Uh, you have when you're in high school or college. Answer, yes. Question, would you say I would. That it's fair to say. I, and then I have, I would that. Okay. Would uh, that be correct? Say more of your long-term jobs are listed on here. Would that be? Correct. Uh-huh. Um, answer, yes. And then I have a question okay. as you. Uh-huh. Um, as you reviewed the two of these. The first of these two. Uh, the first of these two resumes. Uh, did you notice the more recent of the two? Uh huh. Did you notice? Did you notice anything that you recognize as? Did you notice anything on it that you now recognize? Oh, that you now recognize as inaccurate, or does it all appear to be accurate and correct? Uh, answer as far as memory wise memory uh, serves oh memory serves i would have to say it is accurate it's the contraction oh. uh, one question i have keeping a i think what i will do just for the sake of keeping a of keeping a clear record good 
Good. And we'll get ready for your test. Do you want to stay live or do you want to log off? It's totally up to you. Um, I mean, do we have time? <laughs> I'm sorry? Do we have time? Yeah, it's not I, I, like I paid for it this morning, so yes. Okay, perfect. <laughs> it, it's yeah. not, it shouldn't kick us out because I, I paid for it. So, yeah, we have time. Okay. Okay. Let's just do it now. Okay. Yeah. So, you all can just stay logged on. And so, let me, I'm going to just mute you so we don't get any feedback, but let me give you words on your first Q&A. And remember, you can type it up and send it in, okay? We'll go live after spring break. So what we'll do is just record class live in the morning after spring break and then just put it up in Blackboard as, as we're done with it. Okay. Because I know it's kind of confusing because this is actually for next week. But you have your 200 Q&A number one. You have DWI, ID, U.S. Armed Services, and Pizza Hut. And I'm going to now mute you. And this is 200 starts in the middle Q&A number one for five minutes. Do you have a driver's license at this time? No, I don't. Have you ever had a driver's license? No. Well, have you ever driven a car? Yes, I drive all the time. So you drive without a license. Is that what you're telling us? Yes, I do drive. That's right. Did you drive to the deposition today? Yes, I drove myself here. I had to get here. All right. And is there a reason you don't have a driver's license? No, not really. I mean, have you ever applied for a driver's license and been rejected? No. Have you ever had a driver's license where it's been suspended or revoked or withdrawn by the state for any reason? No, I haven't. Have you ever been arrested in connection with a traffic violation? No, I've never had any problems. Have you ever had a DWI or anything where the state took your license? No, I do not drink, sir. And how long have you engaged in the practice of driving on the state highways without a license? Has it been 15 years or more? More. I've been driving since I was probably 15. And all that time has been without a valid license. That's right. And you've never applied for a license either. Is that right? That's right. Do you have a social security number? Yes. I don't have it with me right now, though. And when did you get your social security number? I don't know. I guess when I was born. My mom got it for me when I was born. And did you graduate from high school? No, I didn't get to finish. I dropped out. What grade did you complete? I went to the 10th grade. Are you able to read and write? Yes, I can read. Do you remember what year it was that you completed the 10th grade? No, I quit in the 10th to get married. Now you say you have been married for 24 years? Yes, a really long time. So it would have been about 24 years ago that you were in the 10th grade. Is that right? Well, I guess that would be right. Do you have a picture ID of any kind? Yes, I do, but I don't think it's in my bag. Let me look. What kind of picture ID do you have? It's a passport ID. Do you have that with you today? No, I don't. I'm sorry. I looked and it's not here. Do you have any picture ID with you today of any kind? No, I guess I don't. Nobody ever asks me for one and I don't have it. Have you ever had more than one social security number? Not like a different number, no. I just changed my name when I got married. Have you ever been in the service, meaning the U.S. Armed Services? No. Did you work at all in high school before you got married? No, I was just a kid. I didn't start working yet. When you got married, what is the first job that you held? I don't really remember. All right, what is the first job that you remember holding after you got married? I had a Pizza Hut job, I think. I'm not sure. And when was that? Right after I was married. That's the first one I can remember. What was your job there? I'm sorry, I don't even remember. Would it have been as a waitress? No, I guess I was a pizza maker. I don't remember. And how long did you work at the Pizza Hut? Probably a couple of months. And why did you leave that job? My husband didn't want me working, so I stayed home. How long did you stay off of work after you left the Pizza Hut job? I didn't go back and join the workforce until about 10 years ago. And what happened then that you decided to go to work? I had all of my kids back in school, so I went back to work. I wanted to make some money. And where did you first work at that time? A little convenience store where he serves hot lunches and stuff. 
and I went to work for him as a cook. So you were a short order cook. Well, he had hot lunches. It was a different meal every day, like red beans and rice or meat, loaf and things like that. Yes, like hot food, different things, chicken. So you cooked all of the food, whatever it was that they were serving. Yes. How long did you work there? I worked there until I moved back here. And about how long was that? Probably three years. And was that a part-time job, just lunchtime each day? No, it was full-time. You worked eight hours a day? Yes, it was a full shift. I mean, did you leave after you finished cooking the meals for the day? Yes, I left. It was like an eight-hour shift. I went in early and I left at two in the afternoon. Would you be responsible for cutting the vegetables and things of that sort? Yes, I did all of the preparing and cooking. And what about the serving? Did you do any of the serving? No. Did the store serve breakfast and lunch or just lunch? Breakfast and lunch. You say you moved back here. Why was that? We just wanted to come back. All of our family was down here. Your family or his family or both? Both. Any other jobs you held before you came back here? No. Did you ever have a work injury while working with the food store? No, I can't remember anything like that. Maybe a little burn, but nothing that was a big deal. Have you ever in your life had an automobile accident of any kind? That was good. Mm -hmm. And then you have your 200, number two, New Orleans Country Club. Or is it county or country? Oh, country. country you have Mr. Sims, Jackson Street, Jackson, Judge John Lawson. Judge, Judge Lawson, so I think it's just Lawson, right? Judge yeah. Lawson. Lawson, like L-A-W-S-O-N. Uh-huh, Lawson. Okay. And then you have... Um, yeah, and it's Country Club, right? Country Club that. New Orleans is Norrell's, N-O-R-L-S for New Orleans. Any other questions, Chantel? Yeah, it's L-A-W-S-O-N. So it would be like Lawson. Did it come out? Let me see. Just like that, but all together. Okay. Okay. And this is going to be 200 number two for five minutes. Let's say in the five years before this accident occurred, were you a salaried employee at New Orleans Country Club? No, you're not a salaried employee. When you caddy, you get paid. It's something like a ticket. It is a ticket. Everybody gets a ticket before they caddy. Whoever you caddy for signs a ticket when you get in. Then you go cash the ticket. That's your compensation. You get paid every day. There's a fee at the New Orleans Country Club that a golfer pays for a caddy and then the golfer tips in addition? Exactly. It all depends on how satisfactory a job you perform. You get compensated substantially when you do an outstanding job, you understand. In the year prior to this accident, what was your average compensation per week? Average pay per week? Or by day, whatever is the best way for you to figure it out. You probably can make $30, $35 on a particular good day, but I can't estimate a week, no. You might go to the club, however, you will not caddy every day. You won't caddy the entire week. You know what I'm saying? Because they have other guys that didn't get a chance to work. They may work in the next day or two. You understand what I'm explaining? Let's speculate again. In the year pre preceding the accident, what's the compensation that you get when you turn in your ticket? What actually did you get for carrying a bag? Most of the time, I didn't get less than $30, $30 for a round. Well, I'm trying to break it up between what the club pays you for turning in your ticket. $18. $18. For 18 holes, the caddy fee is $18, plus, you know, you get tips. That's what I was trying to get at. Basically, it's $18. you are married, Mr. Sims? Yes, I am. How long have you been married? I've been married since about 71 or something like that, 1971 or, or 72. Do you have children? Yes. How many children do you have? Three altogether. Do any of them reside at home with you currently? No, none of them reside at home. I have an outside kid. She's 27 years old. She also has three children. So you have three children by your wife and one child by someone else? Correct. None of these children reside at home? No. How long have you and your wife resided on Jackson Street? Jackson, approximately about three and a half years. So you were residing at Jackson at the time of the accident? Correct, I was. Does your wife work? Correct. Where is she employed? She works for Judge John Lawson, the federal judge. What are her duties with Judge Lawson? She performs domestic work, housework. 
she doesn't work at the courthouse. She works at her, his residence. At his house. How long has she worked for Judge Lawson? Approximately 28 years. On the date this accident happened, immediately before the accident, where had you been? You personally, where had you been? Had you worked that day? Did I work that day? Truthfully, candidly, I didn't. What day of the week was that, if you remember? I can't remember the day of the week. Do you remember why you didn't work that day? I know it was a weekday. Do you remember why you didn't work that day? No, I don't remember. I think there was something I had to do, you understand? In the year that preceded the accident, when you worked at New Orleans Country Club, did you show up every day at the New Orleans Country Club looking to carry a bag? Well, not every day. No, not every day. Quite frequently, you know, but not every day. Were you required to be there every day or was it pretty much when you wanted to show up, the club let you show up? Oh, certainly the club let you show up when you wanted. You are on your own, essentially, at the club. Unless you have special people playing at a particular time, naturally you prepare to be present. During the year, can you give me an estimate of days per week on average that you would show up at the club to caddy? Did you show up five days a week or depending on the weather? Exactly. Correct. I realized the weather was a factor and maybe in December and January you might not be there as often. But can you give me an average figure of times per week in the year before the accident that you showed up looking to carry a bag? I'd say between four and five times. That's the whole week now, you understand. A few days on the weekend. Saturday and Sunday are our better days, you know. Weekends are when most of the people are out there playing. They are not working. So I'll estimate four or five days. Is that approximately the same amount, let's say, since 1975? Is that the amount or about the same number of days since you started working there in 75? Approximately four or five days a week you would show up at the club looking for work? Correct. It's about the same. It hasn't changed. On the day of the accident, you had not been at work? Correct. You said the reason was you thought you might have had something to do that day. Well, I probably had something to do, or the weather was inclement. I wanted to go out that day. If you caddy maybe a couple of days and you do all right, you may want to rest up or something, you know. Immediately prior to this accident, do you remember where you had been? Excuse me? Just before the accident happened, do you remember where you had been? Where were you coming from at? And then we'll get ready for your 180s. Any questions, Chantel? Um, no. No? Okay. And so you have your 180 number one, Richard Farwell, Watkins Ironworks, Stonebreaker Company, Inc., Fisher Island, and Mr. Farwell. <clears throat> and this starts at the very beginning, 180 number one for five minutes. Will you please state your name for the record? My name is Richard Farwell. What is your trade or profession? I am a welder. Do you know the claimant in this case? That is right, I do. For how long have you known him? I would say I have known him for about five years, something like that. Did you ever work with him? I worked with him at the Watkins Ironworks. Is that located here in the city? Yes, that is right. Did you sign up a contract of employment with the Stonebreaker Company, Inc. at the same time the claimant did? That is right, same time. Now, pursuant to entering into that employment, did you go with a group of men that went to Fisher Island? That is right, Fisher Island. You two men went together to that place of employment? We were in the same outfit. Was a part of that journey on a ship? Eight days. What was the nature of that boat? I don't remember the name, but I can look it up and let you have that. Can you recall when you left on this trip? It was in 1993, June. After you got to your place of destination, did you and the claimant work together? Yes, we did. Did you work with him on June 24, 1993? Yes. Do you recall an occasion, Mr. Farwell, that the claimant was called upon to repair a cook stove to be installed in the mess hall for the use of the men at that place of employment? We made a stove for them because they didn't have one. Did you help him in making that stove? That is right. I welded it together. He planned it, laid it out, and I welded it together. As a part of the construction of that stove, were you obligated or did you go to a lower deck on the boat 
and look for materials and parts for that stove. That is right. And you were with the claimant at the time? Yes. In other words, you went down to the lower deck together? That is right. Will you please tell us your purpose in going down there? Certainly. We went down there to get steel to make this stove. It was sheet steel. We got it down in the hold of the ship, back end. What happened to the claimant at the time you were down there looking for this steel? Well, at that particular time, I don't think anything happened to him. He got hurt when we were going to the mess hall with the steel. Can you tell us just how that injury that you just referred to took place? There was a pipe there. The way it was built, a man couldn't walk under it, not straight up. We were carrying the material through and he bumped his head, walked right into the pipe, not exactly right into it. He tried to duck the pipe. He came up and hit himself. He came up underneath the pipe and bumped his head. I was walking behind him. This was in full sight of your vision. That is right. Do you mean to say he raised with his head and struck the pipe? He tried to dodge the pipe. The pipe, I would say, was about five or six inches too low for an ordinary man to walk under. He tried to duck it and came up too quick and stunned himself on the pipe. As it appeared to you, would you say it was an ordinary blow or otherwise? I would say hard. He complained of being dizzy and didn't feel so good when we were around trying to build the stove. Immediately after he struck the pipe, how did he act and how did it affect him? He was sort of dazed like anyone hit with a blow. Did he say anything in that dazed condition or right afterwards? Something to the effect it nearly floored him, something like that. Do you know if he was unconscious? No, he wasn't. He was just in a dazed condition. Did you continue working or rather did he continue working with you in the construction of that stove? Yes, he did. He went on the job on the barge and they brought him back in a very sick condition about two days later. Did you see him when they brought him back on the barge, brought him back to the ship that was stationed there? Yes, I did. He was in the boat's hospital for about two or three weeks afterwards. Did you talk to him on any occasion when you were around the ship's hospital? I went to see him once while he was there. Went once. Did he make any complaint to you about anything when you went to visit him? He said he hadn't felt good since the time he bumped his head. He also said he was having trouble with his ear, that it had gone haywire. Did you notice anything about his ear? No, I didn't see anything, only that he had cotton in it. Did he make any other complaints to you? Only that he didn't feel well. Did he say anything about experiencing any pain anywhere? Yes, said he had headaches. Anything else? Dizzy. Okay, and so we'll get ready for your second 180. You have Claire. Charlie Wilson, Claire Deanna White, Bundy Road, Apartment P22, New Orleans, Loyola University, McDonough, Esther Wallace White, Gaines and Burgundy, Nissan, Stanza, Methodist, Baptist Hospital, Mercy Baptist, Mercy or Baptist, and X-rays. Any questions, Chantelle, on anything there? Uh, no. No? And this will be 180 number two for five minutes then. Claire, my name is Charlie Wilson. I'm going to ask you some questions concerning the accidents that you were involved in, in last year. If you're not clear on any question that I ask you or you don't understand me, please ask me to repeat or rephrase the question. If you answer that question, I'm going to assume you understood that question. I understand what you're saying, okay. People also have a tendency to nod their heads in response to a yes or no question. You're going to have to respond verbally because the court reporter has to get this testimony out. Okay. Claire, why don't you give me your complete full name for the record? Claire Deanna White. What's your birth date, Claire? 7-12-79. What's your current residence? 1923 Bundy Road, apartment P-22. Have you lived in New Orleans all of your life? Yes. Are you still in school? I am still in school, yes. Where do you go to school? 
attend Loyola University. Are you going to be going into your freshman year? Sophomore. What is your major, Claire? Chemistry, pre-med. Where did you go to high school? I attended McDonough. You were going to McDonough when this accident happened? Who do you live with, Claire? My mother. What's her name? Esther Wallace White. Does your father live with you? No. Do you have a regular family doctor that you go to? Not a family doctor. I have a female. Before the first accident, the accident on February 8, 95, had you ever gone to a doctor, any type of specialist for neck or back or joint problems, or even a non-medical person like a chiropractor? No. Let's talk just a bit about the first accident that you were in. That's the one on February 8th, 95. Well, okay. Where did that occur? The street? Yes, the street it occurred on. Gaines and Burgundy. What time of the day did that accident happen? I have no idea. Describe the accident for me. How it took place? I was riding down Burgundy going toward the, I guess, east way. And I came to the intersection and there was a car approaching the stop sign. I didn't stop because she had the stop sign. As I proceeded to go across the intersection, she kept going across the stop sign and she hit the car from the back. She hit the back part of the car. So you were both crossing through the intersection. She ran a stop signal and hit the back of your car. Correct. How fast do you believe you were traveling at the moment of that accident? Because I slowed, so I could say about 40, 45. I mean, I'm not exactly certain. What about the other lady that was in the accident? Do you know about how fast she was going? No, I have no idea. Had she hit her brakes at all before that impact occurred? I don't remember. Do you remember whether she slowed down at all when she came to that stop sign? I don't remember. What part of your car was damaged? The back part. She damaged the back axle. You were driving your mother's car? Correct. That's what, an 88 Nissan? Correct. Stanza. Did you end up hitting anything? Did you hit part of the neutral ground when you were spun around? I ended up on the neutral ground. What parts of your body were hurting after that accident? My knees and my back was hurting a little bit. Do you remember how your knees were hit? They hit up against the steering wheel, underneath on the bottom on the steering wheel. That was both knees. Correct, both knees. Were they bruised after the accident? No. Were there any contusions or abrasions on your knees? No. You mentioned your back was bothering you. What kind of problems were you having with your back? It was principally aching. Did that start hurting you immediately after the accident? No. When you went home that evening? Once I got up and started walking because I didn't get up. Did you go to the hospital that day? Yes. Were you taken by an ambulance from the scene of the accident? No. The ambulance came, but they didn't take me. So your mom brought you to the hospital? Yes. What hospital did you go to? I don't remember. Was it Methodist or Baptist Hospital, Mercy Baptist? I really don't remember. Claire, I have a bill from Mercy Baptist. I don't know which one you went to, Mercy or Baptist, after one accident. Then you went to Methodist after another accident? It would have been Mercy right there by the church. So you went to Mercy? Yeah. You went the night of the accident? Yes. What kind of problems did you complain of when you went to Mercy? My knees and my back was hurting. Any other parts of your body? No. Did they do any x-rays? I don't remember. Do you remember the discussion that went on between the doctor and I guess it was your mother that was there with you about what kind of injuries you had received? No. That was after school one day. It was on a Wednesday, according to this accident report. It had to be. I'm not exactly sure, but... Okay, so that concludes your Q&A, Chantel. If you want to join us, Chantel, I'm doing um, lower lit at 140, 120, 140. It's up to you for accuracy. Coming up next. You interested? Oh, Sorry, <laughs> yes. No, no, no. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so, if you feel like you got one, you can type it up. Have a I, good day, Chantel. And okay. tomorrow we have um, lit. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. For a little after. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Have a good day. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.